for for you in the future. Luke 23, verse 44 through 46. If you have it, say amen. If not, say wait on me, pastor. And the word of God declares to us. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. The title of the message this morning is The Point of Letting Go. The Point of Letting Go. Repeat after me, said that there is a time for you to let go and let God. Repeat, we are those I have to deal with and the people I have to deal with can put me in a state of constant worry that I am a chronic worrier and I have to watch myself that I will find myself worrying over things that are beyond my control. And in those moments when I'm dealing with those things and things seem to be out of my control, I often ask myself, why am I so worried about these things that I cannot control? Anybody know what I'm talking about? That, that we have these times in our life when things seem to be so intense and so difficult for us to deal with that we've prayed and we've read our Bible, but somehow worry seems to be the only thing that we can do about it. And, and, and we, we want to do what God has called us to do, and we're trying to do what God has called us to, to, to do. And it seems like the saints always have a way of just saying, child, just put it in the hands of God. And, and, and in the midst of my constant and chronic worry, I hear them saying, child, pastor, just put it in the hands of God. But somehow I look at them and say, how do I do that? How do I stop worrying and put it all in the hands of God? And everything you deal with you in your life, every person that you have to face, every difficult situation that you come through, there is a point in that situation where God say it's time to let go and let him have his way. And, and many times, because we don't want to receive and understand that place where God says it's time to let go and let him, we allow worry to be our companion. When God has designed peace that surpasses all understanding, letting go is that point where you take your hands off of it so that God can put his hand on it. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, yeah, letting go is that point where I take my hands off it and I say, God, I have done all that I can do. God, I have done everything I can to help them. God, I've done everything I know how to do. I've said everything I know how to say. I've bent over backwards, sideways, forwards, left ways. God, I've done all I can do. And instead of worrying about it, they say, put it in the hands of God. But how do I get place past worry into a place of putting it in the hands of God? Here in Luke 23, we see Jesus at the same place that you may find yourself, that Jesus' his back is up against the wall. In fact, his back is on a cross. They've nailed him to that cross. They've beat him and put thorns on his head. They've done everything they could to him. And Jesus, in this hour of his greatest agony, Jesus, in this hour of hanging on the cross, had done all that he could do. But in this hour, Jesus just let it go. But I want you to understand as we read and look at this text this morning, letting go is not the same as giving up. Hallelujah. Jesus, yes, he did let go and he did die on that cross. But I come to let you know that our God, our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, he may have let go, but he did not give up. Somebody say let go, but don't give up. So when we look at this text, we see very quickly in verse 44 and verse 45 that there is timing and turmoil to the situation that causes Jesus to let go. At the point of Jesus letting go, there's timing and there's turmoil. Thank you, God Almighty. When you find yourself going through something and you're about to give up, you got to pay attention to the timing 
and the turmoil. Hallelujah. Verse 44 says, Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. Interpretation says it was about noon to 3 o'clock. For about three hours, Jesus hung on the cross. The Bible is specific in highlighting the time and framing it that it was noon. It was about uh, the sixth hour until the ninth hour. The sixth hour is about high noon, and the ninth hour is about three in the afternoon. So in this timing, it was important for us to understand that timing is important. And that when you get to the place of giving up, you got to understand and recognize the time. When you get to the place of letting go, you got to measure the time. How long have you been going through it in relation to what you're trying to get out of it? Preach pastor up in here. I, I don't know about you, but many times when I get to a place I want to give up, I want to give up because I'm tired of going through it. I say, I've been dealing with it long enough. I've been dealing with you long enough. How much longer I have to pay attention? Because the longer you're in it, the more you will want to give up. But when you get to that place of giving up, when time is starting to wear on you and you're tired of dealing with it, that is not the place for you to give up. That is the place for you to let go and let God. Jesus was specific in that he only hung on that cross for three hours. That Jesus knew the timing of his death and Jesus knew that there was just a matter of time. Hallelujah. That our Savior would give up and he said, before I give up, I'll let go. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. You've been dealing with this thing all year. It's been 11 months every weekend, Sunday after Sunday you've been praying for the same thing. You've been asking God to do the same thing and you've gotten to a place in your life that you are ready to give up because you said I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired but you got to do like your Savior do and say God before I'll give up I'll let that thing go. So to let go you got to pay attention to the timing. Don't let that situation weigh on you, that you spend so much time in it, that you're ready to give up. Yeah, timing is very important, that between the distance between you giving up and letting go is just that quick. So you got to let go before you give up. Secondly, the turmoil. Verse 45 says that the sun was dark and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Now, I don't know about you, but if sometimes during my day at around lunchtime, the sun goes dark like an eclipse, y'all, that the sun just stops signing and things start to rumble. The veil was torn in the temple. That sounds like a lot of turmoil to me, don't it? That sounds like it'll get your attention, won't it? If things start to change around you, if things start to change without you changing it, oh, I know I'm telling the truth up in here. If things that you was comfortable with start to get uncomfortable, if people that you thought you was running with start to turn their back on you. If your money that was straight at one time start to get a little funny, it'll create a little turmoil in your life. Lord have mercy. And God says when there's turmoil in your life, that is not the time to panic. Somebody say don't panic. Because if you panic, you will want to give up help us in here. In the time of darkness on the earth, in the time that the temple was torn in half, Jesus did not panic, did he? In the time he was hanging on the cross, hands nailed to the cross, feet nailed to the cross, at the point of wanting to give up, he did not panic, did he? When there's turmoil in your life, you cannot panic. When things go in a direction you're not ready for them to go, that is not the time to panic. How long will you go through it in relation to what you're trying to get out of it? It's the time factor between giving up and letting go. But when you start to focus on the turmoil, when you start to focus on the negativity, when you start to focus on what's wrong instead of focusing on what's right, baby, it will make you want to give up. I know I'm a witness to it, that in that place when our God is trying to tell me to, to turn it over to him, in that place where God is trying to tell me to let go and take my hands off it, I feel like I want to give up because there's so much turmoil. I feel like I got to make a decision right now. Can I help somebody? Any decision you got to make right now without praying for it, it's a bad decision. 
any decision you got to make where there's so much turmoil, there's so much panic, there's so much chaos that it requires a decision right now. That is the time for you to pray. That is the time for you to steal yourself. That is the time for you to speak to the storm in your life and say, I will not panic because God is in control. So I'm going to let go before I give up. Somebody said, let go. Don't give up. It's important for us to see that at the point Jesus let go, how Jesus let go, instead of giving up. So the time factor in verse 44, the turmoil and chaos in verse 45, but Jesus in verse 46, he cried with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Ain't it something powerful in that? That speaks to me. Just those little words that we see there, just those six or seven words that you see there, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. Jesus is saying a whole lot to us. Can y'all get with me this morning? If you're going to let go, how many of you would rather let go than give up? Because giving up gives you nothing. Giving up makes you truth about it. Before you give up on your family, turn it over to God. Before you give up on your children, turn them over to God. Before you give up on your job, turn it over to God. Before you give up on yourself, turn yourself over to God and let it go. Yeah, in these few words, Jesus says three important things that I want to share with you and I'm going to get out your way. In order for you to let it go instead of giving up, First, you got to make a declaration. Number two, you got to be obedient. And three, you got to make a move when God says move. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, you got to make a declaration. Two, you got to be obedient. And three, you've got to make a move when God says make a move. Letting go requires, number one, you to make a declaration. You've got to make a declaration over your situation. You've got to declare what God said in spite of what it looks like. Lord, help us in here. You've got to make a God statement over your situation. Jesus cried with a loud voice. He didn't listen to the people. He didn't listen to the markers. It said Jesus cried with a loud voice. He began to pray to his father. Lord, help us in here. What is a God statement? When I find my back up against the wall and I feel like giving up and I know it's not good for me to give up, but I got to let go and let God because I've done everything that I've got to do. A God statement is your declaration over your situation. A God statement, church, tells the enemy, he puts them on notice. It tells the things you're dealing with. It tells the people you're dealing with that you stand flat-footed and say, no matter how bad it gets, no matter what's going on, even when my death is imminent, Jesus said God is still in control. A God statement declares that no matter what you're going through, God is in control. Is God in control in your life? A declaration is a God statement that no matter how bad it is, God, you're in control. Lord, they're packing their bags. They're grabbing their keys. I've begged them to stay. I've asked them not to leave, but they got their head bent on walking out the door. God is in control. The bank done called me and left a message. When you walk out the doctor's office and they tell you there's nothing else they can do, they've done all that you can do for your health, you just stand up and say, God is in control. When your mind is troubled and you can't sleep at night because your problems got you walking the floor, you've got to stop, turn, and look at your problems and say, God is in control. Oh, somebody going to get this after a while. Stop crying. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop looking for somebody to share a pity party with you and get yourself under control and say four words, God, you are the cross of crucifixion. Jesus cried with a loud voice to his father. He prayed even when things looked bad. He said, God, you're still in control. A declaration is nothing more than a prayer. Jesus prayed, y'all, when he was on the cross. That puts things in God's hands. Lord, have your way. When I'm going through and I feel like I've done all I got to do, the hardest thing for me to do is pray, Lord, have your way. Because many times I'm afraid to pray that prayer because I really don't know what God's way is. Lord, y'all ain't going to talk back to me. I'd be okay if God just agreed that my way was his way. I'd, I'd be all right if God would just agree with me and say what I want is what he wants. I'd be all right if God would just let me handle that thing. But that's not what God does, does he? He 
be standing there and wait for you. They say, when you going to take your hands off? I know I'm telling you. When, when you going to stop trying to fix it? When you going to stop wasting all your resources? When you going to stop giving up all your peace? Have you gotten tired yet? You've done everything that you can, and it's still the same way. God wants you to let go and let him have his ways. Before Jesus gave up, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Lord, have your way. Into your hands I commit my problems. Father, into your hands I commit my family. Father, into your hands, I commit my money. Father, into your hands, I commit my health. Father, into your health, hands, I commit my mind. Father, into your hands, I commit every situation that seems like it's trying to make me give up. You've got to make a declaration that, Lord, have your way. Then instead of giving up, you let go. Because when you say, Lord, have your way, there's something about it. For those of us that are really connected to God, I'm not talking about you connected to what pastor tell you about God. I'm not talking about what, what mama told you about God. But you know God for yourself. That when you get in that place where you are ready to give up and you're able to get yourself together, straighten your back and say, Lord, have your way. There's just something that comes upon you when God says, I got it. Lord Jesus, anybody know of a time in your life that you really meant, Lord, have your way? Something came over you, and the Holy Spirit said, I got it. When you really ask God to have his way, God's response to you is, I got it. But watch this. If you're saying, Lord, have your way, but you ain't hearing that I got it from God, God says, when you get serious with me, I'll get serious with you. Don't say, Lord, have your way, if you really don't mean it. 